welcome to Gifted Guitars. My name is Chris Ballinger. Today we are continuing our work on this succulent themed guitar for my brother-in-law Eric. Uh, he really likes succulents and so we've burnt succulents into the the face of this Les Paul style guitar and we've also put succulents into the inlays of the fretboard and we've lacquered it. I've lacquered it quite a bit uh, sanding in between coats. The process for this has been burning this into the wood, staining the wood, then lacquering it, let that cure for 24 hours, sanding it lightly, lacquering it again, sanding that lightly, and lacquering it again. So we've got a nice shiny lacquer on here, but you can see that there is something called orange peel on here. It doesn't have a glassy, shiny finish to it, and today I'm hoping to make that happen. What I'm gonna be doing is called wet sanding and then polishing the guitar. And every time that I've tried to do this, I have gone into the color that I've put on the guitar. My hope for today is that that won't happen, that I will have a guitar that looks like this, but just has the shine, doesn't have any of the texture on it. I haven't been able to do that yet on any of my guitars, so it might not happen today, but it'd be nice if it did. I'd be pretty excited about it. The color for this guitar is actually embedded into the wood because I used stain this time instead of a paint or instead of a lacquer. So it's the color's not on the outside of the guitar, it's actually inside the wood of the guitar. So I would have to sand pretty deep past the lacquer, which I don't wanna do. You don't wanna go past the lacquer, but I'd have to go pretty deep past the lacquer in order to take color off of this guitar. So I, I have high hopes. I'm, I'm really, my fingers are crossed here that the guitar will remain the same color that it is without any markings from the sanding. Another strange thing that happens when you stain a guitar is that the pigment from the stain is sort of embedded into the wood and the wood is porous, so when you put lacquer onto it or sanding sealer, it, it tends to lift that uh, that pigment up into the lacquer. So as I'm sanding this, you will see some yellow, maybe some red tint to the sandpaper. That is still just the lacquer. It's not the actual like wood of the guitar. That's just the lacquer that has pulled up some of that pigment in into itself. And that's gonna be fine. I'm fine with that. It's It's more that if I hit an area too hard with the sandpaper that I actually like gouge into the lacquer, past the lacquer, into the wood, and that's when uh, I typically have some problems. I had a hard time with that with my sister's guitar, the, the pie guitar that I made for her being in Waitress. I had some problems in that area on the guitar that I made for the Weiss Life, and also Rachel's guitar. I had some problems there. So I'm, I'm really trying to master this glassy, smooth look, but I haven't gotten it yet. Maybe today's the day. Let's all take a deep breath and hope for the best. I have laid out a towel here. It's gonna get a little wet and messy here. That is because I will be using some water. It's just uh, water with a tiny bit of dish soap. That way any anything that comes off of the guitar, any like bits of lacquer, won't scratch the, the face of the guitar. It'll sort of slide over it because of, hopefully because of that water and the soap. And I have a big stack of silicon carbide wet dry sandpaper, and there's a whole bunch of different grits in here, so I'm gonna spend a moment to organize. It's 800 grit, we've got 2,000, and I want it going from the lower numbers up to the higher numbers here. All right, I pulled out two of each grit level. Like I said, this is gonna get messy. So I'm putting on the old apron and I'm just gonna take my time with this. One grit after another, after another, and really like not skip any steps, really try and try and master this, make it happen. And um, yeah, let the time lapses commence.
All right, fast forwarding about an hour later, we uh, have gone through all the different sandpapers and unfortunately this happened. While I was wet sanding this, I guess some of the moisture got in between, through this hole, in between the body of the guitar and the laminate that's on top, this uh, flame maple laminate, this really nice wood texture. And it made it rise up so I can feel it, like when I go over it with my finger, I can feel it kind of go up like that. And it took all the color out of it. So now we've kind of got this like weird, weird thing going on here. I don't, I don't know, I guess it's just gonna be there. It's just gonna be this blemish on the guitar, which is unfortunate. Another thing that happened is that the neck of the guitar, you can see some of the color came off right there. So I managed on the rest of the guitar, usually it happens like here on the guitar while I'm sanding, but um, the rest of the guitar kind of managed pretty okay with all that sanding, except for right here. I might be able to fix that though. So we'll, we'll see. This one, this is unfortunate because it's right on the front. It's right there. It didn't happen anywhere else. Like this is all exposed here too, but it just sort of seeped in right there at that part and really kind of messed with the finish. This makes me think of a conversation I had, I think in the comment section, when someone asked me how I keep from getting frustrated on these guitar builds. And the truth is I, I, get, I get a little frustrated from time to time on these guitar builds, but I always take it as a learning process. This is something that I'm doing for fun. I'm, I'm having fun building these guitars. I really enjoy it and I want to keep enjoying it and getting frustrated with it is that sucks a lot of the fun <laughs> out of doing it. So I really am mindful of that. If I ever build a guitar like this again with the laminate, I know to be way more careful with the wet sanding and the openings of the guitar, the holes that are pre-drilled into the guitar. I, I have to be really careful, otherwise that could happen. I didn't know that until just now. It's unfortunate, it does make me a little sad, but I'm not gonna let it frustrate me. I'm gonna use it as a learning experience. And luckily I'm making these guitars for friends and family, so if it's not perfect, they're not gonna be upset about it. They're, they're still gonna be happy and I'll have a little story to tell them about what happened to that part of the guitar. And then, you know, they can tell somebody else what happened to that little part of the guitar. It becomes a conversation piece, a sad conversation topic. Anyway, now that I've gone through all of the sandpaper, it is time to buff everything out. I'm gonna be using this color tone. This is the same company that makes the lacquer that I use. Uh, these are polishing compounds. I'm gonna be using a medium grit and then finishing it off with a fine grit. And I use these polishing pads, which are on my drill. This one's gotta clean it out before I start. I'm gonna be using two different shapes. This is more for like the sides and the neck of the guitar. This is more for like the face and the back of the guitar. And because I'm using two different compounds, I have to use two of each shaped thing. So I've labeled these. This one says F for fine. This one says M for medium, which is what I'm starting with. And same with these two. So let's get started. One other thing that I should mention is that today my sister and my parents came over and I showed them my progress on the guitar. This is going to my sister's husband, so I thought, hey, I'll get her opinion. And she thought that this little blemish right here, this little problem, is gonna actually make the guitar better for Eric, that Eric will appreciate the guitar more and we'll talk about that 
more so than anything else on the guitar, which I don't know if she was just saying that to make me feel better, but it worked. It made me feel better, which is good because I was, I was feeling a little down about this particular part of the guitar here. And now I'm not, I'm not feeling as bad about it anymore. There is one more thing that I want to complete on this guitar before I wrap up today's episode. And that is putting a very special thing on the headstock of the guitar. If you've been watching the entire series, you know what that special thing is. If you haven't, go back and watch. What, what are you doing over here? Why are you at this video? You should be watching the, the earlier videos and work your way up to here. I made a playlist. Anyway, there's one little element, uh, a little embellishment that I wanna put on the headstock of this guitar, but I need a two-part epoxy in order for it to happen. So I've ordered that and it should be arriving tomorrow. And then I'll put it right here. It is the next day. My special delivery has arrived. This is called Loctite. It is a two-part epoxy, which means two solutions mix, creating a chemical reaction, creating a very, very tight, strong bond between whatever I'm gluing together. And hopefully this works out for us today. I've only used this one other time, not this particular brand, a different brand I used for JoJo's guitar to put her little like, emblem thing on the bow of her guitar. And I think it works pretty well. She hasn't called me and told me it chipped off or anything like that. So hopefully, hopefully we get similar results today. The first thing I wanna do is mark out exactly where this is gonna go. All right, I can see it. I don't think it's showing up on the camera at all, but I can see it and that is an area that I need to roughen up a little bit. So I'm just gonna take this tool here and sort of scrape up the surface of the guitar right here. It pains me to do this, but it creates more of something for the epoxy to grab hold of. I'm gonna do the same on the back of this. Now before I put this onto here with the epoxy, I'm going to prep a piece of wood underneath, a piece of cardboard in between the headstock of the guitar and the piece of wood. And then this is prepped to go on the other side. So this will go on this side like this, this will go on this side like this and the whole thing will get clamped together. And the epoxy goes through this part of the syringe and actually gets mixed as it goes through. Well, that was nerve wracking. I guess I'll, I'll leave that overnight and see what it looks like in the morning and you'll see what it looks like next week. Yeah, that's right, another cliffhanger. Sorry about that. I'm just trying to give you a sense of what I'm feeling because it feels like every night I do something to this guitar and then I go to bed going, I really hope that works. And then I have to see the next day if it, if it worked or not. Or in the case of the lacquer, I had to wait two whole weeks. If you wanna see if that works, be sure to tune in next week. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. It's a way of supporting me and this channel uh, by you subscribing. It tells YouTube that you like it and, and it helps the channel. So I'd really appreciate it if you did subscribe, if you did like this video, if you did leave a comment down in the comment section below. All those things are a way of showing support and it's fun, it makes it more fun for me to see how many likes the video gets and, and read your comments and respond to them and give the little hearts. I give out those little hearts. I don't know if you know that, but if you, if you leave a comment and you come back later, you might have a little heart just for me on there. Next week, we will have the finished guitar for you. So be sure to tune in. You're gonna see me do all the electronic stuff, test it out, plug it in, see how it sounds. 
and um, and you'll get to see it, what what happened with the headstock if if that bull skull worked out with the epoxy. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I'm just as nervous about it as you are. Maybe even more. Probably more. You're just you, you're yeah. I don't know. Maybe you're maybe you're feeling this on the same level as me, but I'm just. Anytime I clamp something together and walk away from it, I'm, I get a little, little stressed out. Just a little, just a teensy amount of stress. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you back here next week.